It's a ticking time bomb. Oh, they're gonna, they're gonna die. Oh. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna jump into the crown because I think there is a big misconception about these cars and things that people worry about. Now, you guys know me, I'm a very positive person. I like to look at all the positives about cars, people, the gym, everything. I try and be as positive as I can, right? But I think because of that, people think that everything is perfect with these cars. So let's jump in and have a bit of a deep dive into the crowns. All right, so we're gonna do a bit of a deep dive, honest like review of the crowns today. I'm always, like when I talk about them, I'm always talking about the great things about them. There's not a lot of bad things about them, to be honest, there really isn't. Um, but you guys need to know a bunch of things. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go outside, we're gonna go engine, and then we're gonna go inside of things you guys need to know about. So let's start with the outside. Now, like the outside stylings of these cars, I think is amazing. I really love the 186. I love all the crowns, I love a lot of cars, blah, blah, blah. I'm talking about the 186 today. I love the stylings of the 186. It's got a big presence on the road. It's real gangster, all that kind of stuff. But let's be honest, all of us are gonna do some sort of lip kit probably, or some sort of body kit and, you know, style it the way we wanna style it. Now. Be aware, let's talk about body kits and lip kits for a second. Be aware guys, this is not an S13. This is not a Supra, this is not an R33 Skyline. This is a more of a um, unique car. So there is not going to be an abundance of copy body kits out there. Generally, if you wanna get a body kit, you're gonna be going to the, um, the blow designs, the aim gang, the things like that, the genuine companies and buying the legit ones because that's the only place you can buy them, right? Because of that, they're gonna be expensive. And then you've got to ship it from Japan to wherever you are. So like me, Australia, it's horrendous. When I got rear-ended in this car and I had to get new bumpers, it was like, I think the bill for the insurance was like 14 grand. Like it's ridiculously expensive. So. If you're buying one and you want a body kit, oh, hey guys, buy one with the body kit. It's way easier. Because look, right, adding a body kit does not add five to 10 grand worth of value to these cars. It just is gonna cost you that much money, right? So I got mine for 19, full body kit, rims, ASC 680, all that sort of cool stuff. 19 grand on road, right? There was a completely stock one I could have got for 16 grand on road. Three grand, that's not even the rims, boys. You know, so when you're getting them, have, like know what you want in your mind. Cause like, to be honest, a body kit's a body kit, you know, like, yes, like engine mods and things like that. You gotta be careful. Cause someone could have done a dodgy engine mod, but really when it comes down to it, a body kit's a body kit. Like if it's on and it's painted well, which you can see with your eyes and it's not broken, which you can see with your eyes, like get it. You know, you're gonna save yourself a lot of pain, a lot of hassle in the long run. I know there's a like a, a mentality about like building your own car, built not bought, all that sort of stuff. But when it comes down to it, like if the dude before you paid eight grand to get the body kit and put it on, or it was done in Japan and got shipped over like that, you're just gonna save yourself dollars, you know? Especially if you're getting one directly from an importer. If you're getting one directly from an importer, like no one cares about the dude in Japan that like built it, you know what I mean? Like that he built it, so what? It was it's here now, you know? Cool. So that's body kit, right? Now wheels. Something you've got to be really, really like cautious with with wheels. I didn't think this was a thing that I'd have to tell people, but you want to not reverse into me, bro? That'd be choice. So obviously you got to think about what size you want, the style you want, the width you want the fitment, you've got to worry about brake clearances as well. Obviously guys, like it needs to clear your brakes. Duh. What you... If you are getting a, a aftermarket, uh, sorry, a secondhand set of wheels, make sure you're getting like that, that it all fits. You know, do your research, do your research into fitment, do your research into all those things I just spoke about because there's a, a, a large array of the way people want their wheels to fit, the way they want their tires to fit, etc., etc. Um, like my rear wheels sit out the guards when I'm bagged all the way up because of like obviously camber comes out, but when I'm driving, they sit just flush. So be very aware. The other thing about it is I've got such big fatties on the back and they stick out so far that it sprays dirt all the way out the back of the car, right? I'm just about to get it like washed at the moment. I literally do that like here and there just to spray off the dirt because there is so much 
dirt that gets sprayed up the side of my car um, because my wheels stick out so far. Be aware of that. If you don't like washing your car, don't get super aggressive fitment because especially in Melbourne when like you it's raining or whatever, it sprays all over the shop, all right? Be aware of that. Also with wheels, when you're buying them, be, care be careful because some people will like buckle their wheels, pretend they're not buckled um, and then be like, no, no, they're sweet. You know, there's dodgy people out there, be aware like yes you can fix like mild buckles things like that but just be careful when you're buying secondhand gear while we're talking about the outside i'm going to include the suspension guys the suspension on these things like a big part of the reason we buy these is because they're on airbags and there's so many people out there that are like it's a ticking time bomb oh they're gonna they're gonna die oh they're airbags guys they're a factory airbag we're putting asc 680s on these things to make them bag to the floor we're making them do something they're technically not designed to do. They're like they're designed to move like this much, you know, go from normal to high. They're not designed to slam on the ground and go like way up in the air. But we're making them do that. So obviously the system has its capabilities. And if you're gonna be bagging up on the floor, put it in the air, bag it on the floor, put it in the air, back, like trying to show off and all that sort of stuff. I get it, it looks cool. You wanna be able to show off your car, but you are really relying on this tiny little compressor that's not made to fill up four bags from completely empty to completely full a million times, you know? If you wanna bag out, bag out. Then get back up and drive off. Stop playing with your ASC 680s. Guys, please stop playing with your ASC 680s. All I see all over the crown pages and comments and like requests and all this stuff is, my airbags don't work, they've stopped working, it's not bagging up, what's wrong? I think my whole system's broke. Nah, dude, you played with it too much. It's probably all it is. You played with it too much and you've like, you've tripped some things. You've tripped the compressor's heat timeout, or, or sorry, heat uh, trip, or the, the timeout trip, or you know, you're not on even ground, or you're, you're trying to take too much from a basic like system. Stop playing with them so much. So many guys are like, oh, I'm just getting a coilovers because it's easy. Bro, I get it, coilovers are easier, but a big reason you bought this is because it's a big swanky sedan with airbags. Just don't expect too much of it, you know? Like ease up on it. Give it a little minute, you know? Give it some time. Let it do its thing. Let it go through its paces. It's not a big system. Also, you can always go to a big aftermarket system. Once you've done that, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, as much as you want all day long, have some fun, you know? Once you've gone aftermarket. But for the stock system, just, just baby a little bit. Give it some respect. You, it's doing more than it should for you as it is. Just be thankful it's doing that, okay? So look, we'll do the engine in a minute because I want to talk about that when I'm actually driving and I'm about to go into the car wash. So let's talk about the interior. Now, the interior, as a lot of you would know, the wooden dash pieces here, they break. The one across the dash almost breaks on everyone's. It's like an S13 with a cracked dash. They almost all have it, like it's a thing. So if you've got one that doesn't have that, that's incredible, but it's like a, almost a $2,000 piece just to get that piece. I ain't paying that, man. I ain't paying that. I'm not paying 10% of what I paid for the car for one dash piece. Get out of here. Like, I'm gonna go and do what Will Run just did and get some carbon fiber and wrap the whole thing. Like, that looks sick. I love carbon fiber, so like that's actually probably good. Like pretty good idea. But I don't know. But the dashes do crack. Be aware the dashes crack. Like it's not, it's not rare. It's going to be very, very common. Also, the head unit, it's in Japanese. As far as I'm aware, no one's actually done the conversion from Japanese to English on this head unit yet. It's always the question asked. I asked it, and if you dare ask it on the Modern Crown Facebook page, oh, look at I, oh. Do the search. Oh, you got to search. Why have you not searched? Oh, shut up. Sorry, I did the search. Didn't come up with anything. Like everyone else did the search. It didn't come up with anything. Chill out, bro. Just tell me no one's done it yet and go on with your day. No one's done it yet, but you can get a nav system that goes from, like it's a full aftermarket system and it's like the Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all that sort of stuff. You can get that, but I think it's about eight to $900 and I think that's with someone fitting it or maybe that's just like getting it by itself. I'm not sure, I haven't really looked into it because I don't want to spend that much money on that yet. I've got other builds that I'm trying to spend the money on. So that'll be, you know, 
something in the future. That'll be something a little bit later on, you know? Uh, I probably will do that because I love this car. And that's kind of the only thing on the interior, apart from the crack, like that wooden piece on the dash, that I don't love. Um, everything else is sick. Heated seats, sunroof, like I love the like the gray and the black kind of mix interior. I love all that stuff. Like it's great. It's a really comfortable interior for a daily. If you're buying this as a track car, like someone said in one of the videos, oh bro, like you got to give the crowns a break. You know, they share the same suspension as an Aristo and that did really well on it. Bro, is an Aristo? Has an Aristo? Come on, brother. That's not a good car for the track either. Like, yeah, it might be better than a Hyundai XL, but let's be real about this. It's no Skyline, it's like no GDR. It's no like proper track setup. Let's be real. If you want to track these, you can track any car you want, brother, but you're going to be putting a lot of work into suspension and stuff like that. It's not why you're buying these generally. You're buying these because they're sick. You're buying these because they're comfy, they're slammed, big wheels, V8, big exhaust, stuff like that. That's why you're buying these. You're not buying crowns to track them. And if you are, you're a, you're a special kind of person. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying you're special because you're going to be doing something pretty different, you know? And I love different, but it's going to be a lot of work for you, okay? But yeah, interior, sweet. I love them. Um, they come apart quite easily when you want to do maintenance on them, uh, all that sort of stuff. And that like, oh, man, doing maintenance on these is pretty good. Like, to be fair, uh, it's not the hardest thing in the world. There is like the, what is it? One side of the bank um, for doing the spark plugs kind of sucks. But apart from that, it's pretty good, you know? It's pretty fair. But yeah, like fixing stuff on the interior and these things is really like quite easy. Uh, it comes apart quite easily. You do have to be aware things can break. Um, like you, you've got a 20 year old car that has probably gone through a heat treatment when it got um, brought over from Japan and that's not great for plastic you know that's really bad for plastic let's be honest so anything that got heat treated like that it's probably going to be a bit more brittle as for the engine she goes pretty good like i love this thing it's got adequate power i feel like that's the perfect way to describe it it's not a ball breaker, but it is not slow by any means. You put your foot down and you're off. You give it some revs and she sounds good. It's got a nice note to it. Now, don't get me wrong. You put the wrong exhaust on one of these and you've stuffed it. Like, well, you haven't stuffed it, but I feel like you can definitely take away from how beautiful this thing can sound if you put the wrong exhaust on. But that goes the same for every single car. You put the wrong exhaust on any engine and it's gonna sound like dog water, you know? Like, you get a, I don't know, can you make a Ferrari sound bad? Probably. Like, you put a really bad exhaust on one, it's probably gonna sound terrible. But again, same as what I was saying with the wheels, terrible is a personal opinion. Someone might like one sound and someone might hate that sound. So whatever you want, you can do. If you want to go full straight pipes, I've heard them, they sound sick, like they're loud, but it's not what I would specifically do purely because this is my daily. So my preference for this is to not have it like, you know, crazy loud, just nice and loud, you know? But the engine, like, come on, it's a 3UZ, like, it, it's amazing. 4.3 liter, 90 degree V8, quad cam, uh, VVTi, like, 300 horsepower is good. It's great. A lot of people keep hitting me up being like, um, how do I get more power out of it? Okay, look, easy way to get more power out of it and cheap exhaust. And I mean, you could do intake, but to be honest, from what I've experienced, intakes don't do a whole heap on NA cars. Um, as in, like, not don't do anything, but you're not gonna get a huge amount uh, by doing your basic pod filter because your normal panel filter actually has a cold air intake from the outside. It's not bringing engine heat in. It's got its 
um, like air supply from say over the radiator or like under one of the headlights or out the side of the, the fender, like, you know, down into the bumper, something like that. So it's got actually a cold air intake already. If you're ripping that out and then just putting a pod filter on um, in the engine bay where it's hot and heat soaked, you're now sucking hot air in and that's not ideal. You want cold air to come in. So if you're doing just a pod filter swap, um, you're probably not gonna get a huge amount of benefit out of that. If you're doing like a proper custom cold air intake, yeah, you're probably gonna get a benefit out of that. But just like kind of bang for buck kind of thing, you know what I mean? You might get a better uh, bang for buck to actually just fully send it and go and get that Ford supercharger and slap that on top. Run seven pounds of boost, which this engine should be able to handle all day, every day. You probably get close to about maybe what? I don't know, 400 horsepower? And 400 horsepower in one of these would be quite a lot. Me personally, I'm not gonna go down that track until the channel hits like half a million subs. We get half a million subs, boys, I'll probably slap a supercharger on this. But to be honest with you, we get half a million subs, I'm gonna go and buy an Aston Martin and do a rebuild on that. Like, I'm, I'm dead serious. When I got the E46, there was an Aston Martin sitting in Grays Online's um, yard, and it was the one that I've always wanted, and I almost fainted. Um, I didn't even look at the price because I knew I couldn't afford it. But half a million subs, we're getting Aston Martin. All right, let's get it there. Share this around because I know you guys want to see me do an Aston Martin build. I know you do. And if you don't, just pretend you do. Subscribe and share this to your friends so that this dude in Australia can buy an Aston Martin. Yeah? Okay, cool. Anyway, back to the crown. Yeah, look, that's that's kind of that's kind of it. Like these are great cars. I'm I can't really I can't really put them down but I can be realistic with you about them. They're not, they're not indestructible. No car is indestructible. They are all mechanical things all put together. Yes, these are a very good version of that. Um, hence the reason I bought one and I love them and you guys love them and we all love them. Like Toyota's a good brand. They got some really good engines. We got great engines in this. We've got great, a lot of stuff in this, but also, you know, they fell short on a couple of bits. Things like, Yes, okay. I mean, is the suspension failing, falling short? I don't think it is. Like what, because one dude in Melbourne had one airbag completely fail, like drastically. Oh, we're all gonna throw them in the bin now. Oh, everybody get rid of them. Oh, they're really bad, shut up. Like, bro, they're 20 years old. And he, like, the previous owner in Japan was probably sacking it to the ground bringing it back up or sacking it to the ground and driving around sacked on the ground because they love doing that stuff over there like give it a bit of justice you know like it's probably had a hard life it's probably had a hard 20 years I mean you carry two tons for 20 years and see how you're going at the end of it you know what I mean so like just because one dude's failed I know a guy who had a JZA 70 and his flywheel flew through his um, firewall or we're gonna go bin all the A70 Supras because one dude had a failed uh, flywheel. No, of course we're not. We're gonna go, that was unfortunate. Hope it doesn't happen to me. It probably won't because that's a real one-off, you know? Give it a break, give it a break. Like, yeah, they fell short. They did fall short on the uh, plastics on the interior. I ain't gonna say they didn't because they did. They should have done a lot better with that. Uh, but at the same time, like, how do you plan for 20 years later, you know? They put them in and probably for the first like 15 years, they were sweet. 10 years, they were sweet. And also it depends on how it's treated. What if the car got parked in the sun for its whole life? Like that's not gonna do great for plastic, but what about one that gets garaged for its whole life? It's gonna be mint for the plastics, you know? What are they gonna do? Get a piece of plastic and put it in 50 different scenarios for 20 years before they build the car. Probably not, you know? They're getting to the point now, they're gonna learn what plastics to put in. And when it comes down to it, I don't think a car manufacturer really cares what their car is like in 20 years, you know? They've made so many more cars, so many updated versions. They don't care what it's like in 20 years. That's your problem now, not theirs. And if you wanna fix it, give them two grand, you know? So I just wanted to cover that stuff, guys. Look, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do the E46. I'm gonna do the Supra as well, just like an honest review. Because yes, I am. Like I've said before, I am very positive about these cars. I don't like to like harp on about negatives, but we do have to be realistic about 20-year-old cars that we're buying, or 30-year-old cars, 40-year-old cars, whatever it may be. You've got to be realistic about these things. Things break. You do your maintenance. You carry on. You know. 
if you want to replace it with something better, do it. But just be aware when you're buying these cars, things about body kits, things about wheels, things about how it's been treated previously. Have a look at service history. Does the car look like it's been beaten up? Does it have a lot of rust underneath? All that kind of basic stuff. Guys, just like, that's the kind of stuff you want to look for when you're buying a Crown. But it's also the kind of stuff you want to look for when you're buying any car. If it's got an ASC 680, check out my video about how long it takes to go down and up. I think that mine is a fairly healthy system. So check that out. If it's got an ASC 680, chuck it on the floor. Chuck it on the floor at the dealership. And if the person complains, be like, what? I'm just going, putting it on a setting. And then put it up in the air. Wait your 15 minutes and make sure that it goes all the way to the floor and all the way to the moon, right? Do stuff like that. Don't just go, oh, it should be okay. Get it home and find out that some of your stuff's broken, you know? Like do your, do your hard yards. And the last thing I wanna to touch on, and I hope you guys will suck around to this part of the video, because this is the most valuable part of the video. When you want parts for these cars, guys, Google, use ZS, 186 parts, okay? And it's like your second or third option. And it's like Toyo Data, something like that. Toyo Data parts or whatever it may be. You click on that, gives you four options on a white page and it's the four options of the 186 crowns. Whether it's an A type, a C type, uh, this year to this year, like 04 to 06 or 06 to 08 or whatever it may be. Click your option and you can literally click on anything. It gives you a full schematic of the whole car all the interior, all the exterior, all the electricals, all the engine, everything. You click on it, you find your part, you click on that. Yeah, sweet, I need a new suspension strut. Click on that, done. Okay, I need the front right, click on that number. It's got like the number and the listing down the right side of the page. You click on that, gives you a part number. Go on to Yahoo Japan, search a part number. Go on to Google and search a part number. Go on to eBay and search a part number. Go on to uh, I think it's like Amayama or Amamaya or something like that. I've butchered the name, but when you actually like do the use it S186 parts, it'll be like the fourth or fifth option down. If you put that part number in there, it will actually give you an option to buy it brand new. So you can buy whatever you want. You can find out the prices. Then if you're getting a secondhand part, you know if you're getting ripped off or not, whatever it may be. If you're getting a secondhand suspension strut tower, you are taking a gamble. Maybe that's on the end of its life, or maybe it's had a sweet life and you're getting a sweet deal. You might get it for 200 bucks instead of the 800 that it is from like, uh, from the, like from Toyota, you know? But that is, that is the most important thing I can deliver to you guys. So many people hit me up for, I need this part number, I need that part number. That is what I do. And you know what else I do? When I need, like when I need to get parts off of that and I need to pull it out, you can see the part. For example, the headlight, I searched the headlight, I Googled an image of the headlight and then I looked at the mounting points of the headlight. That's exactly how I knew I needed to take the front bumper off to get the headlight out. I didn't jump on the Modern Crown Owners page and ask everyone there. You're gonna jump on there, you're gonna get a bunch of abuse. <laughs> Can you guys tell yet that I don't like that Facebook page? Me and Maximilian don't like that Facebook page because it's, it's a bad environment, it's a bad vibe. Every Crown Owner that I have met in person has literally said to me, you're on that page? And I was like, nah, bailed on it because it was just a scummy page. And they're like, yeah, me too. And then they delve into bitching about one specific member and I kind of just put my hands up. I'd hate to be that member. But yeah, guys, that's the most important part, getting those part numbers. That's It's so easy to get the part numbers and like you can find anything. Once you get that part number, you can then go and cross-reference because it will give you if it's on a GS300, if it's on an LS430, if it's on a whatever, and you might be able to find a wrecked one, do you just go and grab that suspension part? It's way easier when you do your research. It doesn't take a lot of effort, doesn't take a lot of time, but you can save yourself a lot of money. All right, guys, I hope this has been helpful. I hope you've enjoyed it. Bit more Crown content. Don't worry, we've still got some mods to go on the Crown. I don't have a starry headliner yet. So you know we've still got stuff to do. I'm not on an aftermarket uh, little like modified airbag system yet. And I don't mean a full aftermarket, I mean a modified one. But haven't done it yet, so we still got stuff to go. So if you want Crown stuff, it is coming. It's just coming in time. You've always got to get that money behind him. You've got to get those dollars. Speaking of those dollars, if you want to support the channel, Patreon was advertised earlier on. It's like a dollar a week if you want to help out. If you don't, 
then your views, your likes, and your comments are more than enough. So please do all of those. Please subscribe if you want to, and if you want to hang around and see these videos. Thank you for coming along. Thank you for all your likes, comments, subscribes, Patreons, everything. You guys are legends, and I will see you in the next one. See you later, guys.